Welcome to this evening of Poldovsky's songs written to poems by Paul Velen. I would like to thank all of you for coming to this event. Like many other women composers, Poldovsky is not well known today. However, her songs are becoming a more popular subject in concerts, recordings, and research. Our recital this evening will introduce you to this relatively unfamiliar composer, Poldovsky, and her songs. And by comparing different composer settings to three poems by Paul Velen, we will study Poldovsky's original styles and influences from other French composers. Poldovsky was born in Bruxelles, Belgium in 1879. She was the daughter of Henrik Wieniewski, who was a celebrated Polish composer and concert violinist. Poldowski had several different names. Her maiden name was Irene Regina Wieniewski. After marrying Sir Aubrey Edward Henry Dean Paul in 1901 in London, she became Lady Dean Paul. She used Irene Wieniewska for her early publications. However, shortly after her marriage, she began to use the pseudonym of Poldowski, which always appears on her published works later on. Both her father's and her husband's surnames were too famous, and she did not want to take advantage of, of that, their fame. Some also guessed that she had to come up with a pseudonym for serious consideration among male composers. What you see on the slide, the left is a portrait of Poldovsky's parents, and the right is Poldovsky with her children. A lot of detailed information about her life is missing. However, there are enough sources indicate that her life was rather unhappy. Her father, Henrik Wieniewski, died penniless in Moscow the year after Poldovsky was born. She married to a British aristocrat, Baronet Dean Paul, but they went through several crises and finally had a divorce in 1921. She had three children, Donald Severin, Brian Kenneth, and Brenda. Her first son, Donald, died when he was 15 months old while she was in Paris for a composition study. Donald's death led the breakup of her marriage and she dealt with financial struggles and health issues for the remainder of her life. Both Brian and Brenda remained unmarried for the remainder of their life. The Our Song Project website reports that Brenda was an actress and Brian was an opium addict. Poldovsky's early uh, musical education happened at Bruxelles Conservatory. Her mother and Poldovsky visited London very frequently and finally moved to London in 1896. She pursued her musical training in London before her marriage. And then Poldovsky had gone on to study in Paris in 1903 with André Gidalge and in 1907 with Vincent Dindu. Her composition study in Paris was rather brief due to her son's death and two more childbirths. Many sources also um, report that Poldowski, quote, was always restless and dissatisfied under any scholastic influence, end quote therefore preferred to pursue her musical education on her own. At some point in Bruxelles, the works of Debussy were introduced to her, which exerted a decisive influence on her musical personality. She composed 35 songs, and 20 songs were set to poems by Paul Velen. Most of her vocal compositions, aside from five English songs, they were written in French. You will definitely hear the French influence in Poldovsky's songs. Dr. David Mooney, 
The head of keyword studies at Dublin Institute of Technology says in his article, quote, there are strong nuances of Foray and Debussy to be found. Yet Podolsky exerts her original voice, end quote. From 1927 and on, Podolsky struggled with severe pneumonia and died from a heart attack in 1932. During her last years, she opened a fashionable haute couture boutique and supplied for the British royal family. However, her publishing royalties went to creditors and she was penniless like her father. Her son, Brian, was the only person at her side at the time of her death. Now, next slide is the list of songs we will discuss and perform this evening in a chronological order. Now we have to ask why Poldowski set most of her songs to poems by Paul Verlaine. She had an affinity with poems um, of Verlaine, and her Verlaine songs are considered as the finest work of hers. For better understanding of Poldowski's Verlaine songs, I see it is necessary that we discuss about Paul Verlaine now. Paul Marie Verlaine was born in northern France in 1844. Paul Verlaine is universally recognized as one of the greatest French poets of the 19th century. Verlaine produced 32 uh, books of poetry. Today we'll discuss only first four books of his and you will see all my songs are from these first four books of his uh, collections. Velen's book of poetry were direct result um, from his love and relationships. In 1866, Velen published his first collection called Poem Satunia. Inspired by his secret love of her cousin, um, of an orphan cousin, Elisa. His first book was written during Verlaine's adolescence, so it shows about um, his unstable uh, emotions and mostly talks about love and sensuality. Later in this recital, I will discuss and perform Podolsky's Crepuscule du Soir Mystique. This song is the only poem Podolsky used from Poem Saturnia. Verlaine's second book, Fête Galante, is his most famous book. Fête Galante was the 18th century uh, term of a garden party. It started as a type of French painting started by Watteau. You will see that aristocratic characters dance and flirt in masquerade costumes like Italian commedia dell'arte uh, de characters. After Louis XIV died, the French aristocrats moved from grandeur luxuries to um, intimate and personal settings of entertainment in a garden. From Fête Galante, Podolsky chose nine poems. Not long after the failure of Fête Galante, Velen fell in love with Mathilde Motet and they got married. Velen's next collection of poems, La Bonne Chanson, was dedicated to her. La Bonne Chanson reflects the poet's yearning of peace of mind and mental purification. It is quite contrasting style to Fête Galante. In 1871, Velen met a young poet named Arthur Rimbaud. The two men instantly became lovers and their homosexual relationship became a public knowledge. Velen abandoned his wife and his infant son George in 1872 and wandered with Rambo between London, Bruxelles, and Paris. This travel lasted for three years until Velen was sent to prison for two years because he shot Rambo in his hand. Romance Sans Parole was published in 1874, while the two poets escapade between Belgium and England. The book was originally dedicated to Rambo. 
After four months sans parole, he published 27 more books of poetry, mostly because of financial necessity. In his late years, he struggled with alcoholism, drug addiction, poverty, and health issues. Interestingly enough, his lifestyle and strange behaviors attracted admiration in France. Valen's poetries um, have always been extremely popular with uh, song composers. More than 1,500 Valen songs have been written by 650 composers from 24 different countries. Valen was elected Prince of Poet by the French literary world in 1895. He died in 1896, and 3,000 people attended his funeral. Now, let's talk about uh, Valen's writing technique. Before Valen, poetic lines were supposed to have even numbers of syllables and rhymes. This is a poem by Victor Hugo. He was a poet before Valen's time. This shows a perfect um, example of, uh, um, of a rhyming and syllable system. So I'll explain just a little bit about the style. So if you uh, see on the screen, you'll see the final um, syllables are matching rhymes. Now, if you look at the bottom line uh, with the translation, you see the, uh, it has a perfect sentence, complete sentence um, within a line. So, I walk with eyes fixed on my thoughts, a complete sentence, without seeing anything outside, without hearing anything noise, complete sentence. So that was the style before Valen's time. In contrast, Valen wrote uneven syllables and rhymes. As you can see on the slide, he also allowed the meaning of one line overflow into the next. This is a technique called enjambement. I'll explain. Um, let's look at the slide together. You see the final um, um, words are not matching in rhymes. If we look at the uh, translation in the bottom, like cities rain my heart, so the first line does not have a complete sentence and it overflows to the next line. My heart rains teardrops too. What now? This languorous ache, this smart that pierces wounds my heart. A sentence does not finish at the end of a line, but continues on into the next line. As a result, the composers who set their songs to poems by Paul Verlaine had to use uneven phrases, irregular rhythms, changing meters, and new forms. Now the lecture video is done. I'll meet you on stage after a five minute break. Thank you for watching this video. And don't forget to do a survey. We'll have a raffle tickets after the performance. Thank you so much.